feels better raising a hallelujah than watching the news, doesn't it? So Lord, we thank you for the days that we live in, the days that you had prophesied that we would live in. And Lord, that you told us that when we begin to see these things come to pass, to lift our head because our redemption draws near. And Lord, we thank you for this wonderful chapter. You anointed the Apostle Paul by the Holy Spirit to write to a church that was afraid that they had missed the rapture because of the tribulation that they were facing. And so, Lord, we thank you for this truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, my friends, it's very interesting in this chapter because in verse number one, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That happens in Revelation chapter 19. We'll be with Jesus. It's the end of the great tribulation period, which has lasted seven years. And, and we will be coming from heaven with Jesus to a Christ-rejecting world. Now, we often talk about the battle of Armageddon. I have great news about that battle. You know how it's won? The Lord simply speaks and it's over. Can I hear a hallelujah? <laughs> this is awesome. And, and so the Lord comes with his tr- uh, church. Then it also says in verse number one, and are gathering together with him. That's the rapture of the church. It happens at the beginning of the great tribulation period. And again, simplifying the book of Revelation. John is told, and we have a key to understanding the book of Revelation, in, John chapter, or in Revelation chapter 1, verse 19. John is told to write the things he had seen. Revelation 1, the vision of Jesus. The things which are, Revelation 2 and 3, seven letters to seven churches for messages of, uh, for all churches in all times. Then the third thing, he's told to write metatauta, the things that will take place after these things. And my friends, what's so amazing about that phrase that the Holy Spirit gave to John, it's only used three times in the Bible. It is used in Revelation chapter 19, the key, after these things. It is used twice in Revelation chapter four where John is raptured up into heaven. He hears the voice come up here and he's in heaven. And my friends, then Revelation 4 and 5, John's in heaven. Revelation chapter 6 starts the great tribulation period, which lasts seven years. At the end of that time, Jesus comes back. We'll talk a little bit more about Revelation 13, which is the middle of the great tribulation period. The prophet Daniel talked about a seven-year peace plan that would happen with the nation of Israel, but in the middle of that seven years. And my friends, that time period is one of the most designated time periods in the entire Bible. It is marked by three and a half years, the middle of the week, times, times, and a half times, 42 months, uh, 1,260 days, but they all refer to that exact moment which is alluded to in this chapter here today, Revelation 13. Revelation 19, Jesus comes back with his church and begins the great millennial reign, 1,000 year reign on earth with Jesus Christ here. At the end of that 1,000 years in Revelation chapter 20 is the great white throne judgment. And my friends, I want to tell you something. Jesus said, if you're not for me, what? You're against me. If your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, you will face eternal judgment. And my friends, what we're going to see today, 
There are only two camps in the world today. There is the camp of the Christians and the camp of the Antichrist. And we have to understand something. That we don't fight against flesh and blood. But we fight against powers and principalities. And the events that we are watching today, there are only two camps. And my friends, I believe it is clearer than ever to see the two camps. You are either for Christ or you are filled with hatred, violence, and murder against Christ. Because Satan is a liar and a murderer from the very beginning. So today, as we go through this very powerful scripture, I am happy to tell you there is a clear and distinct line. And you're either one or the other. And so Jesus comes for his church and are being gathered together. Now again, we have wonderful brothers and sisters who don't believe in the rapture. But I want to tell you that if that were not the case, the Apostle Paul would have never written this chapter. He would have never said, because they were going through great tribulation, he would have wrote, yeah, I expect it. But they wrote this to correct because they thought because of the tribulation that they were going through that they had missed the rapture that he had told them about in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And in that scripture it says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together, exactly like John in Revelation chapter 4, together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it lays out a very important truth. For God, in verse number 9, did not appoint us to wrath. And you need to understand something. That seven-year period of tribulation is not normal tribulation. It says in Revelation chapter 6, the wrath of the Lamb is poured out. And so, my friends, as we go through this chapter here, again, there is one or two camps. It doesn't count that you might be sitting with someone who is a believer. It, it doesn't matter whether your spouse is a believer or your children are believers or your parents are believers. Life is not like horseshoes. If you're close, you get a point. You are either for Christ or anti-Christ. That's the only choice that there is. And so the scripture goes on. In verse number two, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us, as though the day of Christ or the day of the Lord had come. My friends, on the day the church was born, Pentecost Sunday, in Acts chapter two, Peter quotes from the prophet Joel. BJ just finished the book of Joel on Sunday nights. It was absolutely awesome. And he covered this portion of scripture. But this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. I shall show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. And the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the notable day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So my friends, for every person sitting here, you are either for Christ or anti-Christ. 
And I want to give you that opportunity because we have the greatest message in the world. And that is this. It does not matter what you've done in your past. It, it, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, as God, paid the price in full by dying on the cross that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you will be saved. And everyone, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So there is no reason that one person should be left behind. And I wanna give you that opportunity this second to be saved. And I'm gonna ask that you pray with me. Lord Jesus, I do believe that you are the Messiah. I ask forgiveness for my sins. And I do believe you paid the price for me. And so I give you my heart. And I wanna follow you. I need the power of your Holy Spirit to live for you in these dark days. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. Let no one deceive you, verse number three. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, my friends, here we have two names of the Antichrist. There's 33 names in the Old Testament for the Antichrist, 13 names in the New Testament. And there's something that we need to understand. He's telling us what's going to happen in the last days. There will be a falling away. And again, my friends, when Jesus writes seven letters to seven churches, the sixth letter is to the church of Philadelphia, the church of brotherly love. That's who we are called to be. The church of Philadelphia is mission-minded. The church of Philadelphia is adhering to the word of God. The church of Philadelphia is not denying his name. And my friends, I wanna tell you, this is why we teach and we believe Every single verse in the Bible from the beginning of the book of, of Genesis to the very end of the book of Revelation. And we believe what the book of Revelation says in the last chapter. You better not add anything to it and you better not take anything away. And my friends, I got great news for this church you know what the Lord says? I'm gonna keep you from the hour of trial which will come upon the whole world to test it. And my friends, Jesus would tell us to be a people who watch and pray that we may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. So if there were no escape, then why would Jesus twice tell us that there was an escape? And there's more than twice, but I just quoted you two of them. And my friends, we need to understand this because the very next church is Laodicea. And my friends, I don't care where you go in our country today or around the world, you can find the church of Laodicea. And many times it's very large and very rich and people love going to it because they're lukewarm and they're never ever, they can go from now till kingdom come and never be convicted of sin once. There will be no mention of a coming judgment at all. And my friends of that church, you need to know what Jesus said. Because you are lukewarm, I'm gonna spew you out of my mouth. Anybody here like to throw up? Rather violent, isn't it? So we gotta understand, Jesus warned us there would be an apostasy. Jesus warned us there'd be a falling away. I've been a pastor for 40 years. In my lifetime, I have seen entire denominations turn away from the truth of God's word. I have watched Christian college after 
quote unquote Christian college turn away from the truth of God's word and into liberalism. I've watched church after church. And so my friends, it is very clear we are witnessing it before our very eyes today. But what saddens me as well, I have in my 40 years of being a pastor watched our great nation turn away from the Lord and what is wrong is considered right and what is right is considered wrong. And just as the prophet said, as we have sown to the wind, now we have reaped the whirlwind. But I want to tell you, when you look at our country today, there are still only two camps. There is the Christian camp and there is the Antichrist camp. That's all there is because that's the only division that there is in the world. And my friends, I want to tell you, it's not people, don't get me wrong, it's not people, it is the spirit of antichrist that gullible people give themselves to because they do not have a love for the truth, which we're going to see. Now the scripture goes on. And the man of sin is revealed. The son of perdition, we're going to see in a minute when he's going to be revealed, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or all that is worship so that he sets as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. My friends, Jesus spoke of that in Matthew chapter 24. It is called the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet in Daniel chapter 9. We see it fully played out in Revelation chapter 13. Because when this man of sin, the Antichrist, first appears on the scene, the world's going to hail him. He's going to come out of chaos and violence. My friends, you need to, and this is absolutely a travesty in our country. Because for years we have given in to the liberals who have taken over public education and the textbooks of public education rewriting American history to make our young people hate America. And my friends, that Marxist plan was from the beginning. You have to understand, they did the exact same thing in Nazi Germany. And then they created chaos in Nazi Germany. Several things that they did. Defund the police and take away everyone's guns so that the, the, the Nazis could beat up people and intimidate people and within a very short amount of time, took Germany completely over. You know why? Because Hitler was a type of the Antichrist. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 2 that there have been many Antichrists through history, and it all comes down to the very same scenarios. Because Satan is a liar and a murderer and a thief. And there are only two groups that have ever been in the world. Those who are for the ways of God and those who are against the ways of God. And that's why through history we have seen atrocities that have arisen. But I want to tell you something about the Jewish people and the Holocaust. 
There isn't a one of them that wants to destroy the monuments to that because they want people to remember how absolutely awful it was. And my friends, if we don't learn from history, we will be destined to repeat history. We've got to know all of the history, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and learn from it and be a better people. Amen? Now the scripture goes on to say, and so in Revelation 13, as this Antichrist appears on the scene and is hailed as a great world leader, by the middle of the great tribulation, his true colors come out because now a a Jewish temple has been built in the city of Jerusalem on the Temple Mount, the absolute center of, a biblical prophecy is the city of Jerusalem. And my friends, I know that everyone is just inundated with our own national problems. But I want to tell you something that's going to happen July 1st. Israel is going to assume control of 30 percent of Judea and Samaria. And my friends, I want to tell you, Jordan, which is a wonderful nation, I I love the Jordanian people, them and the Filipinos are the nicest people in the world. And they're, they're just very gracious people and God has a great thing for the Jordanians in the future. But I want to tell you what was written about him about this because the king of Jordan finds himself now in a very precarious position. He, he, it is described as this. He's sitting on a volcano surrounded by a forest fire worried about the earthquake. <laughs> because I want to tell you, Iran has declared that if Israel does this, they will obliterate them off the map. And Jesus gave us a warning of wars and rumors of war. But I want to tell you, obviously, we're Americans and we're considered with what's happening in America. But as far as biblical prophecy is concerned, it is centered with the city of Jerusalem and the nation of Israel. And blessed is the people that stands with the nation of Israel. And again, my friends, one of the best things that President Trump did after Republican and Democratic presidents for decades had said they would do it, but he actually did it. He, as with all of our capitals in the entire world, moved our capital to the eternal capital of Israel, the city of Jerusalem. And I want to tell you, we're going to be blessed when we stand with the nation of Israel. Now the scripture says in Revelation 13, his coming world leader in Revelation 13 sets himself up in this new Jewish temple that was built that brought peace to the Middle East. And let me tell you, if anybody appears on the scene with this, but the Antichrist had no intentions of keeping it because of this. The Satan has always desired to be worshipped. So by Revelation chapter 13, people will receive a mark in their right hand or on their forehead. And it says this, rich and poor everyone, and no one is going to be able to buy unless they have that mark. Now, my friends, we are watching things in our world as we have never seen before. There is more known about you than has ever been known before, even to the point of where you go. I surely cannot be the only one that has a conversation with my wife and something appears on my news feed of what we were talking about. Kind of a funny thing, it happened last Sunday. Usually on Sunday I go to the Mediterranean restaurant 
You've never been there? Wonderful Jordanian Christian people, the absolute best Mediterranean Middle Eastern food I've ever eaten in my life anywhere, including the Middle East. They have better than Middle Eastern food, all right? Because they're Jordanian Christians from a, a wonderful Christian town not very far from now Mount Nebo where Moses looked over the mountain. Is that awesome? So anyway, we normally do that. I get in my car last week, my phone tells me it's six minutes to the Mediterranean restaurant <laughs> that I go to once a week on Sundays. So just know there is more information being compiled on you than you could ever dream or imagine of who you associate with and hang out with. So it is not impossible. And we have Bill Gates who have already said it. He wants to implant in a vaccine that is gonna be made mandatory worldwide and implant a chip. My friends, this is no longer sci-fi stuff. Now, we as Christians do not need to be terrified by this because, my friends, nobody's going to take the mark of the beast by accident, and I have great news. You're a believer, you're going to be with him. You're not a believer, don't take the mark, all right? The scripture goes on to say, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things. And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. So the Antichrist is going to be restrained. I've been a Christian for 40 years. You cannot believe how many people have been named as the Antichrist. It's unbiblical. You can't name the Antichrist because he's not going to be revealed until the church the Holy Spirit working in the church is removed. Now, my friends, does that mean there'll be no Holy Spirit on the earth working? Absolutely not, because people are getting saved during the great tribulation period, but it's gonna be like it was in the Old Testament. It's not going to be the same as it is the Holy Spirit working collectively through the church. And at that moment, the Antichrist is going to be revealed. So when ju someone jumps up and someone puts something on Facebook about, I know who the Antichrist is, they're unbiblical. This is why we got to know the truth of what the Bible says. Now let's go on. Do you not remember that when I am still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. Underline this next verse. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Say it with me. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Again, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. There's always been a spirit of Antichrist. And the spirit of Antichrist is lawlessness. And my friends, as we look at the events of our day, it's crystal clear to see. There, there's no mask. You have to understand, it's not these people. We don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against the mystery of lawlessness, which is the spirit of Antichrist, which if you're not for Christ, you're Antichrist. And so when you see that, it becomes a very clear picture. And one of the things I think that we all miss, Jesus said what? As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. In the days of Noah, there was sexual immorality of all kinds that have filled the land. But a part that I think many believers miss and violence filled the earth. I saw on Facebook last night and it's just, it's hard to look at it. I, five thugs 
broke into an 86-year-old woman's house, beat her up, and set her on fire and killed her in America. Did you hear that on the nightly news? Where on earth was NBC, CBS, ABC, CNN, MSNBC? Complicit. Because they speak only lies for their own political agenda. You see, my friends, here's the truth. Can we stand against what's wrong in America? Can, can we boldly say there is only one race? It is a human race. It makes no difference whatsoever the color of one's skin and to discriminate against that is 100% anti-Christian. But can we also stand and say, I stand with law enforcement in this country and I'm gonna pray for them every day. Because I wanna tell you something, that's the truth. That's the truth. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, truth is fallen in the streets. My friends, Isaiah prophesied about these days. Isaiah chapter 59, verse number 13. In transgressing and lying against the Lord. That's our nation. And departing from our God. Speaking oppression and revolt. Is that not what's being said today? Exactly. Oppression and revolt. Justice is turned back and righteousness stands afar off for truth is fallen in the street. Do black lives matter? Yes. But here's the reality. Do all lives matter? And that's yes. And my friends, I want to tell you something. It is a scientific fact that there is only one race. It's a human race. Have you ever had your DNA done? Guess what? DNA says we all came from two people. We know the names of those two people. Hallelujah. It's Adam and Eve, isn't it? And I'm telling you, every DNA test proves it. Do you realize the only difference of our DNA. The only thing that is visible is the different shade of our skin, which is based only on one thing, melanin. And do you realize what that difference is? 0.01 difference. That's the only difference in any human being Because there is only one race, the human race. We all came from Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. And so we as a church need to speak the truth. Because truth is fallen in the streets. And my friends, I want to tell you where it began to fall in the streets. It was by a person. His name was Darwin. And Darwin wrote about the different races. Do you realize in Darwin's books, he writes about the Aborigines in Australia and he calls them the missing link along with people in Africa. And I want to tell you, it is his seeds, his lies that were embraced that brought forth the racial problems that we see today because the truth is exactly opposite. So we want to end racism, throw Darwin's books and all his lies out of every school in America and teach the truth. (laughs) Teach the truth. That there is one Adam, one Eve. We are one people. And my friends, I want to tell you something. 
in the book of Revelation in chapter 14. And then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. So during the great tribulation period, the everlasting gospel is going around. The everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth. And I want you to listen to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. The everlasting gospel, it doesn't matter what color his skin is. My friends, I want to tell you, what color was Jesus? <laughs> I know what color Jesus was. I've been to the Middle East. You know what color Jesus was? Brown. And do you know what color people from the Middle East are? Anywhere from white, white to dark brown. Because my friends, the reality is we have all of those genetic makeups in us that are 0 .001. And here's the deal. After the Tower of Babel, when people separated into different areas, there were those that became darker in their melon and those that became lighter. And here's the thing. We're going to let that divide us? Or are we as a church going to say, we are standing together against injustice, but we are standing in favor of law and order and the truth of God's word? Amen. And here's something else. You want to talk about slavery and injustice? Where did all the slaves in America come from? My friends, they all, every single one of them, came through the Muslim hands at Zanzibar, where we go in Malawi. It was one of the favorite hunting grounds. And, and I want to tell you, I've read many of the eyewitnesses' accounts. Do you know what ended slavery in America? Christians going to Africa and proclaiming the truth and laying down their lives that people could be free. And my friends, if they want to tear down monuments to slavery, they ought to start with Islam. Because my friends, Islam today still enslaves people. This ain't ancient history. But have you ever heard that before? You know why? Because truth is fallen in the streets. Do you realize in our country there is a number one platform in a political party. It is the murder of babies through abortion. Do you want to know something else? The lady that started Planned Parenthood, Margaret Sanger, 100% of a racist who wanted to eliminate the black population. And yet, my friends, they stand proudly on proud parenthood. And I want to tell you something about Planned Parenthood. 79% of their abortion meals, meals are located in minority communities. And I want to tell you something about New York City. There are more black lives murdered by abortions than there are live black births in New York City. And I want to tell you what, that is anti-Christ murder. It is terrible and is a lie and the truth needs to be told and my friends I don't care where you want to go with it you want to talk about marriage well God said in the beginning he created a male and female what's under attack today male and female guys you wouldn't have ever thought that one would you what else is under attack today marriage because God's, God's the one that invented marriage, made marriage. One man, one woman. But you see, my friends, truth has fallen in the streets. And so it comes to us as a question today. Do you understand 
There is a spirit of antichrist in the world that is pulling the strings against everything that's true. This is why many of the churches have gone into apostasy because they do not believe that God is the creator. They do not believe that God created man and woman, that he created the animals after their kinds. Do you know who used Darwin's teachings? Adolf Hitler. The Aryan race. You know who he was joined by? The Muslims, because they wanted nothing better than to kill all the Jews. And my friends, you need to know something. Yes, black lives matter, but the black lives political movement is tied with the nation of Islam and 100% pro-Palestinian. On the nights of the riots in Minneapolis, they were already declaring it was the Jews who taught the police in Minneapolis what to do. No, that's fact. But you see, truth has fallen in the streets. And so, the mystery of lawlessness. The scripture goes on to say this. The coming of the lawless one. Well, first, no, we can't miss verse number eight. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the, mouth, uh, with, with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. I want to read that to you. And it says in Revelation chapter 19, Then I saw the heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and him who sat on it was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. And here's where we are. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself shall rule with a rod of iron. And he himself treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of almighty God. And he laid his robes on him and on his thigh he had a name written king of kings and Lord of lords. And my friends, what we have in our culture today backs up their lies is a mob mentality that if you do not conform, they will destroy you. My friends, there was a pastor from Nazi Germany who wrote this. His name was Martin Niemöller. First they came for the communist and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialist. I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unions and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me and there was no one left to speak out for me. Really, are you gonna attack Aunt Jemima? It's a great story. Have you ever read the story? She was born a slave, became a millionaire, helped many people out of poverty. Does any of that make any sense to you? And what happened to, we don't have to agree on everything, do we? Do you have to have the same opinion that I do? Can I not have a freedom of speech? But my friends, again, this ain't nothing. Do you want to not accept Christ? Well, let me tell you what your world's going to be like. It's going to be like living in the middle of Seattle or Minneapolis with the riots. Violence is going to increase after the salt of the earth, which is the Christians, is taken out. The scripture goes on. And the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish. And underline this, because they did not receive a love for the truth that they might be saved. 
The Bible tells us in the book of Hosea, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. This is why we study the Bible chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Because my friends, I don't want anyone to be led astray. I want you to know yourself what the scriptures say. I want you to know the truth because the truth will set you free. That's why, my friends, I have told you for years, it is worthless to argue with people over abortion or anything else. That's a, a complete waste of time. There is only one thing that is going to change, and that's when a person asks Jesus Christ into their heart. They're going to look up. They're going to understand this world. They're going to understand what life is all about. And they are going to say, as I did when I asked Jesus into my life, I see, I see, I understand, because now it is crystal clear what is going on in the world. Is there a conspiracy? 100% anti-Christ conspiracy that has always been in the world, that reels its ugly head. But my friends, we are getting closer and closer to the time where we as Christians are going to be caught up. And for this reason, in verse number 11, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. My friends, what's the lie? It's very simple. It's in Genesis chapter 3. That if you willfully rebel against God, you will be like God. And if I'm God, I get to make the rules. And I'm going to make the rules... 2 Peter chapter 3 tells us for one reason, to fulfill my lusts. I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired of talking about this stuff. How about let's go on and finish the chapter. All right? And here's the rest of the story. That they may be condemned who did not believe in the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Romans 1, you need to read it. Suppressing the truth in unrighteousness. Again, my friends, we've had generations to teach the American children lies. And now we are reaping that. And the scripture goes on. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, beloved, but brethren, beloved by the Lord. I want you to say something with me. I am beloved by the Lord. Say it. I am beloved by the Lord. Again, I am beloved by the Lord. Again, I am beloved by the Lord. Because my friends, I think everyone in our country, and for around the world for that matter, is despairing. I don't even like turning on the news. I actually don't turn on the news. I read the news off my phone. But I am very informed on what's going on. But my friends, I have good news. Because this is the truth for us. First of all, we are to have a thankful heart. I'm going to rejoice in all things. You know why? Because there's more and more people in the world that are being shaken and there's tons of people that are coming to the Lord. Can I hear a hallelujah? And I want to tell you as a church... We are not going to just hunker down and save ourselves. You know what we're going to do as a church? We're going to continue to do what we've always done, reach out here in the Morongo Basin, but we're going to reach out around the world in the name of Jesus. I was visiting with Vlad in the Republic of Georgia, and you know what's happening in the Republic of Georgia? And by the way, Vlad's car blew up, 
I shared that with somebody in our church. They gave $10,000 that will be going. Vlad will have a new car this week so he can get around. But I want to tell you, I want to tell you, in Iran, Iranians can come to Georgia and by the thousands People are turning to the Lord in Iran. We're going to have a part of raising up the church in Iran. Is that awesome? And in the church in Russia, and the church all over in Africa and Uganda, the work of rescuing children in Malawi and raising them up to make a difference. Because my friends, we have always believed in one thing. We are one race. It is a human race and we are going to stand together and we're going to fulfill that great commission of Jesus Christ in these last days. The scripture goes on to say, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the spirit and the belief in the truth. My friends, sanctification is just a big word that means set apart. You answered God's call. And you're saved. Now who does God love? He loves everyone. Why hasn't he already come back? He doesn't want any to perish. So this gospel goes to absolutely everyone. But here's the deal and the difference. Everyone that has asked Jesus into their heart answered that call. And the scripture goes on, to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here's what we're supposed to do. Stop being afraid. We are called to stand fast. The apostle Paul wrote to us in the book of Ephesians to put on the full armor of God, not to be unaware of the schemes of the devil. And my friends, I hope you're not believing the lies of the media. You got to understand they're not speaking the truth. There's never been a time like it that I can, I saw it happening 20 years ago. You can go back to tapes 20 years ago and you will hear me saying it, but nothing like what we're seeing today. And nobody asks any questions real questions. Did you realize that they're flying in people to fill all our hospitals in Riverside County and other places in, 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 uh, River, in Southern California with people from COVID? They're importing them from other places. Did you know that? Oh, gosh, I guess the local news forgot to cover that, didn't they? And so, my friends, we just got to look past everything to see what our part is. And here's our part. We are not giving up. We will not be silenced. We will speak the truth. We're going to stand up. We're going to stand up until that day that we're taken up to be with him forever and ever. Hallelujah. So stop thinking that we just got to hunker down. I know moving to Montana sounds pretty good. I sort of like the island idea. I had several people say, hey, if you still want to do that island idea, I'm in, you know, (laughs) and just sort of live happily till Jesus comes. But my friends, he has called us to occupy until he comes. And the scripture goes on to say, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or epistle, by the entirety of the word of God. Because my friends, whenever people stop believing the word of God, then it ushers in all kinds of evil. And the last thing is a prayer. And let's pray it together. We can actually read it aloud together. In verse 16. And now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who has loved us and has given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work. Amen? Let's stand. In the book of Titus, 
in chapter 2, verse 13. It says, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's our hope. Is it a fight? Is it, are, are, I'm tired of this, are you? Yes. And, and, you know, it's kind of interesting. Have you noticed riot season passed and we're back in coronavirus season? You know, they, 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 there's something, right? I mean, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? It's interesting the way the media views it. You know, there's only two places that you can get the coronavirus. It's in church or a Trump rally. Protesting, you can, you're going to be just fine. But it's like, you know, some of this stuff, when you just look at it, you go, does this make any sense? What's it? Yeah, no, it doesn't. And so here's the thing. Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. My friends, I want everyone to hold the line. We're in the battle. I believe it's the last day battles that the Lord has told us about. We all need to stand up, hold fast, and charge on because we have the victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.